everybody. I'm Kate Conroy. And I'm Vinny Civitella. And this is Other People's Business, which is the podcast from the New Jersey Business and Industry Association, the largest statewide business association in the country. We release a new episode every other Wednesday, so be on the lookout for that. Shout out to New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group. They do home, auto, and workers' comp, and they are the official sponsor of the show. So check them out if you need some updated coverage. Okay, just a couple of housekeeping matters before we get started. This podcast is available anywhere you can get a show. That's iTunes, Google Play, Amazon's TuneIn. We even put these things on YouTube if you'd rather watch than listen. But um, if you are watching or listening on a network that allows for ratings and reviews, we totally appreciate that five-star rating. Helps us get discovered by more awesome listeners just like you. So with that out of the way, our guest today, a fellow podcaster, is Mitchell Beinhacker of The Accidental Entrepreneur and yes. Beinhacker Law. Thank Say you for having me. Your voice. Hey, oh. fun to be here. <laughs> Pleasure's all ours. Usually I'm like, did you have to travel far to get to us? But we're still virtual, yeah. so there's no travel required. Mm-hmm. Um, where are you, Kate? I know Vinny's in Trenton, but where are you? I am at the satellite office here in beautiful Edison, New Jersey. Oh, that's not too far from me. I'm in Clark, right off the park right there. Oh, I know where you are. You're like 15 minutes away. Yeah, I'm close. That's great. That's great. Yep. Okay, so today's icebreaker is, what are you currently binging? And that could be television, movies, books, or food. I, I, my favorite answer to this question will always be, Rachel Durkin, eggs. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Is that a question for me? Yeah, we all have to answer. What are you currently yeah. binging? Oh, definitely series, you know, movie series. Like I, I'm a, I always have a book, usually from a guest, and then one on Kindle, and I'm listening to one in the car, plus podcasts. Um, but definitely movies. So we just finished, um, or we're finishing Ginny in Georgia on Netflix. Um, but it wasn't my favorite. My wife likes that yeah. stuff, but I, I like broad church and some of the real intense, you know, the undoing and things like that. I like, I like that kind of stuff you get. Yeah. Nice. I haven't heard of any of those. Give me a recommendation. What are they? Well, broad church is this series with, uh, Olivia Coleman. It's out of Britain. A lot of good Britain stuff. They got Brit Box now. You got to pay for everything these days. And then oh, yeah. uh, a Wandavision was very good. My daughter and I love that. She's into superheroes. Yeah. Um, and you didn't hear the Undoing. That's the one with Hugh Grant and Nicole Kidman. He's got. A, yeah, that that's a good. Yeah, one. I wish I had more time to dive into all of this stuff, especially since, like, as you said, I've probably I'm paying for like three, four of these services now. <laughs> but like, there's just so much out oh, there, and so I have much so little time to do it. I know. Yeah. Well, that's why podcasts are great because you can listen. On the go. Yep. Yeah. So that's probably what I'm binging now. All right. And Vinny, what about you? Uh, all oh. right. I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to sound so dorky, but we, we've been binging The Miraculous Ladybug. I don't know if you heard about that. The what? It's, it's, a, it's a kid's show. Um, my daughter got really into it, and it was the sort of thing where it's brilliantly written, so we got invested. <laughs> but it's a, it's a superhero show where you got these two superheroes. One is the Miraculous Ladybug, and the other is Cat Noir. And Ladybug is Marinette, and Cat Noir is Adrian. They don't know each other's secret identities, but Marinette is in love with Adrian, and Adrian is in love with Ladybug. And so they're both very stubborn in that, like, no, I don't want anything to do with you. I only have eyes for that other person. Aww. So you're, like, killing yourself. Like, when are they going to get together? <laughs> It's the sort of thing where, like, you should be telling your daughter, like, okay, that's enough TV. Let's go to bed. But you're like, you know what? If you just wanted to watch one more, it wouldn't be the worst thing. All right. I got to check that out. That sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as far as, like, TV shows intended for five-year-olds go, it's brilliant. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm out of that. I got a 15-year-old. my youngest. I, I've been freed of Paw Patrol or whatever they're watching Oh, yeah. Nowadays. We're doing Paw Patrol, too. That's that's the big one. We didn't have Paw Patrol when they were little, so it's like a... Mm. We had other crazy things. JJ and the Jet Plane. Remember that one? JJ Masks. I don't have that yet. Yeah. No, that, that's PJ gone. Masks? Yeah, my nephew is really into PJ Masks. Yeah, masks. Chloe loves PJ Masks. Yeah. Really? Is that like superhero? Yeah, she's got kids? a whole outlet. Oh, it's everything. She goes yeah. through phases. You know, there's the superhero phase, and then there's the girls riding horses phase. You know, like it, puppies phase is always a thing. You know, so. It's... <laughs> <laughs> Kate, what are you yeah. watching? All right, I'm uh, I'm deep into this show out of Australia called Offspring. It's about this um, obstetrician in her 30s, maybe early 30s, and her love life is a mess. Like she's really together professionally, but she can't just make a relationship work. And she's got this really big, messy, loud, crazy family. 
and they're always like fighting or making up or having an affair or something. And it's, I guess you call it a dramedy. Um, and it's, it's called offspring because what she does for a living is she brings kids into the world and her family is always having another baby or, you know, getting married or getting divorced or something crazy like that. So it's, what's it's a it lot on? Of fun. What platform is it? Uh, it's Netflix and Hulu. It's a lot of fun. Um, but also I've been binging this. I just recently discovered that you can buy olive hummus and I have been eating my body weight in like this Kalamata olive hummus to the point where I was like, I'm going to go broke. I need to find a recipe so that I can just make this at home. But I'm not really a big fan of chickpeas. I don't, I don't understand why I don't like chickpeas, but I do like hummus. It's a thing that I don't totally get. So I bought a can of like um, white beans and I've been like experimenting with putting together this bean dip. But I always New business add, like, idea. There you go. Right, exactly. <laughs> but I'm always adding the these olives. So like, you know, you have like a, a, a dirty martini. So this is like a dirty bean dip, but it, that does not sound at all appetizing. So all. it's weird for me to be like, I've been doing a dirty bean dip. Delicious. Yeah, that's not something you want to <laughs> do on an, anything but an adult network of some sort. <laughs> Dirty bean dip. Like, where's this conversation going down the toilet real fast? <laughs> On that note, <laughs> Mitch, tell us what you know. <laughs> no, let's get to the exciting stuff. They want to stop the exactly. conversation about dirty bean dip. I'm just, uh, I'm just a business lawyer. So um, just like the NJBIA, I work with small to medium-sized business. Well, you work with all kinds of business owners, but small to medium-sized business owners. I help them start and form and grow and transition and sell and acquire. Um, I deal with a lot of family business planning, so I'm always doing estate planning and business planning gener intergenerationally uh, between um, those families that are involved in businesses, sometimes partnered, so they're multifamilies, I guess, if you want to put it that way. And I do not go to court. You don't want me to represent you in court under any circumstance. And um, so I just, I'm just a transactional and a drafting guy. That's all I might sound bored, but that's what I do. And then the podcast, I that's my it's not a hobby, but it's what I enjoy. I, you know, I like interviewing people, I like getting on the mic with you guys and talking and finding interesting people in the world and the things that they're putting out there and bringing to people and their thoughts and ideas. So that's, that's about awesome. it. I've been doing that for about 29 years I've been practicing law. That's great. I uh I feel like the podcasting has been a nice way to continue the networking. You know, there are there are virtual networking opportunities, as you know, Table for Four is one that we um, that we partner with Paradigm uh, Marketing and Design and and Lorena Mascara's um, LWNH. Table for Four is wonderful, but the 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 more like quieter moments like this, you know, getting to know somebody really well, the podcast is great for that. It's really nice. Yeah, it's nice to spend an hour with somebody and learn all their stories. The funny thing is you, people are telling you their story like, oh, yeah, and I did this. And then you're like, what? You did what? <laughs> and and they're, they're like, well, I didn't think it was a big idea, big deal. Yeah, it was a big deal. You know, whatever. You said you were in a coma for three weeks, and then you came out and started, well, you know, okay. You know, so that's the way. It's funny the way people look at themselves. And I've been able to connect with people all over the world, which is really nice about the whole, you know, video platform because I've interviewed people in, London and Singapore and, and Australia and up in Canada, Vancouver and Toronto and down all over the United States. And I wouldn't have been able to do that without all this going and hiding and being virtual. Yeah. So Technology. How did you decide business law versus like a state law or any of the others? Well, I, I always liked the state law and tax law. I, you know, I was always interested in small businesses. I've always been since I was in high school, middle school, starting little businesses. You know, I never really got a job when I was in high school. My job was like, you know, waxing cars. I had a detailing company and I was a tennis player. So I was stringing people's rackets or whatever it happens to be. My dad was always in the insurance business, but he was always interested in business and stuff. And he'd throw Forbes on my bed all the time. So that's just kind of where my interests were. And then I was coming out of college and um, my grandmother, may she rest in peace, was like, whatever you do, go to law school, go to law school. So I didn't want to get my MBA, so I went to law school, and in law school I started learning more about business and business planning and forming companies and how they worked, and I was more interested in that and estate planning and tax planning, but it all kinds of fits together, you know? Yeah. And that's kind of where, you know, where my interest came from, and then slowly but surely I just developed my practice because I know, I don't know, several hundred financial advisors throughout the state, and I do a lot of work for their clients, and yeah, so I'm just, 
I'm doing that all the time. People need stuff done. They need a will. They need a business agreement. They need a company formed, a buy-sell agreement, whatever it happens to be. And then just next thing you know, it's 29 years later, and I'm still doing the same thing. So That's incredible. Yeah. What is the most common mistake that uh, the business owners make in the in just in the um, day to day? Yeah, that's why it's called like the accidental entrepreneur. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They uh, they don't write a business plan. I mean, they just don't do any kind of planning. I mean, the reason the word planning is exists because you're supposed to do it ahead of time. Yeah. That's why they call it panicking is the other word, right? So you don't you don't do things like plan as you go. You plan it out, and it doesn't have to be. Look, don't plan for a year and a half for a business that can get started in a month. But you, you have to strategically plan things and, and avoid some of the, the potholes in the road that are right in front of you because you, you, you didn't realize, oh, well, wait a second. If we don't do this right, we open in January, but we're an ice cream store. We're not going to sell any kind of product until like maybe April. We better make sure we have enough money to do that. And people are just like, they call me and they're like, I got to close my business. I'm like, you just opened like four months ago. What? And they're like, well, you know, I made, it took us too long to open and we had this problem and that problem and we didn't, we didn't, didn't Pick the right location. I don't know what the reason is. They're all different reasons. I'm just I'm combining them all into one case, um, and that's but that's the issue. You got to sit down. You got to plan things out. It always changes, so you're always planning, but you got to start somewhere, and nobody starts. They're too excited so, about whatever it is they're doing. It can definitely be easy to say, you know, make a plan. What are some of the things that people don't think about when they sit down and make a plan? Like, is there something where you're like? everybody forgets to think about this or forgets this part of the plan or yeah is it just yeah. so, step one make business step three make profit <laughs> no, <laughs> you know? I like it all. no it's not completely like well let's take entrepreneurs for example right they're very and i'm the same way right they're very right brain they're very excited about all the creative stuff that they're doing marketing websites and this you know at wix you go and you do your own and hopefully you eventually get a professional to do it so they're very excited about that stuff and they overlook like the money side of things like just because you make a dollar you, you sell something and you get paid a dollar that doesn't mean you made a dollar you might have lost money and you don't even know it so a lot of people shy away from you know doing the the, the numbers of the business and they, and and as their business grows and they're busy and cash flow kind of hides a lot of things which is not a good thing they're afraid to like figure out am i making money when am i not making money and then i'm committed to this business but so what? So you walk away. You know, there's like four major parts of a business. If I a business plan. So if I boiled it down, you look at business plan templates from different companies. Maybe NJBA has one, but Score certainly has one. There's a bunch of them out there. They're anywhere from eight to twelve different parts, right? But if you boil it down to four sections, there's a section about your company or your product, depending on how you service whatever you're doing. Then there's the people behind the business, and then there's the marketing, and then there's the financials. Those are like the four sections that if you focus on those four you you're off to a good start i have a four-part template i've boiled it down if anybody wants it they can drop me an email I'll, I'll send it to them but um yeah and if you start figuring out like how are you going to market this thing who's going to help you do it what is it and what are the numbers behind the whole thing you got a fighting chance i'm not guaranteeing anything but you at least have a fighting chance to notice the problems as they come up because problems are part of life Right. You don't have any problems when you're dead. Before that, you got a lot of problems. So that's what you got to do. So if you don't do the planning, if you don't put in the the uh, what's the word, the, the systems, the methodologies, the documents, whatever to plan as you go, you will make mistakes. I mean, we all make mistakes. Right. You started the podcast. I'm sure you made mistakes. I made all kinds of mistakes <laughs> when I started the podcast. I was like, what am I going to do? I, I recorded a guy once for 50 minutes and it didn't record. We did the whole thing, and I went to check it after. I'm like, I, luckily he was like a friend of mine. I'm like, oh, we gotta do that again. He's like, why? <laughs> Didn't record. like so you so you make those mistakes, but you want to limit the mistakes and you want to increase your chance of success because that's why you're doing this, not just a hobby. And people don't take the time. And maybe ultimately your business plan becomes a marketing mod guide, a financial book, uh, an employee manual, a handbook of running your business. You know, it grows into a library if you're doing that kind of work, but that's working on your business, which I'm sure you guys have spoken about before, versus working in your business. And if you can do that and be a planner, you don't have to be perfect about it. You don't have to come out of a business school with an MBA degree because I don't have one. You you will have a, a tool for measuring how you're doing. Money in the bank doesn't measure how you're doing. It doesn't. So that's that's my 
you asked me what my pet peeve was about, you know, the one thing that people mis make the mistake they make. Yeah. Constant, 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 constant. I tell people, well, let's look at your business plan. Let's figure out what you did wrong. They're like crickets. Uh, I don't know, business plan. Yeah, there's problem one. So yeah. they shy away from it. Yeah, they should don't. If anybody's listening to this, don't shy away from writing a business plan. Even if you're in business. I had a guy come to me as an attorney. He said, we were having a business plan challenge last summer, like where you can write your business plan in a week, right? So I had like 50, 60 people signed up. It's like a Literally workshop? like 15 people got started, huh? It's like a workshop? No, it was a five-day challenge. So what happened was each morning you got a video and an attachment and said, this is what you got to do today. It was each four parts, and then we wrapped it all. So 55, 60 people signed up. Maybe some people just wanted to get the stuff. Let's say 15 started. I think two finished. I had people call me like, oh, God, I had other things. It was like hard. I'm like, yeah, that's why they called it a challenge. It's one week out of your life. So, yeah, so we got through that. And then the people were, um, what, was, what was the thing I was going to say? They were, um, I guess they, they just, like they had excuses like one week out of your life to do this. But the people that did it were very appreciative. Like they had a whole binder and it was all nice. I had to catch the up idea on the writing, <laughs> <laughs> The idea of writing a business plan sounds really daunting. And so I can understand why people would look at that, sign up for it with the best of intentions, and right. then procrastinate and procrastinate. So like, what is the first best thing that somebody can do to rip the Band-Aid off just to get started? Well, that's why I made the four part template. I boiled it down to like as little as it possibly could be for this, you know, you know, write down what your market is, do some market research, figure out what it is you're selling. Do people really want what you're selling or what you're going to sell? I think I know what I was going to say before. I had a guy come to me for that business plan challenge and he's a lawyer. He said, should I really be doing this? I'm like, well, what do you mean? You have your own practice. Yeah, but we're lawyers. We don't like need to do business planning. I'm like, I didn't know what to say to him. I said, yeah, of course you should be writing a business plan. I have a business plan. I write. I do planning. I'm planning my practice. What do I want to do? What kind of markets do I want to be in? At what point can I add additional staff or support or other resources? What do my prices have to be so I make money? Like people overlook things like that. It sounds silly, but it's it's funny, but that they do that. You know? Yeah. 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 Interesting. Okay. That's fascinating. I feel like I could talk about this for, you know, hours, but we, we are on the clock. You do have to get back to work at some point. So we're yeah. going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to play a game. And we're back. And it is now time to play my favorite game, Awful or Awesome. I'm going to name three things in quick succession, and we each have to decide if they're awful or awesome and be prepared to defend your answers. Are you ready? Okay. Always. All right. First up, the secret. Uh, is there Vinny, a specific I don't secret that we're talking about? <laughs> the secret like the book, the secret? Yeah, the book, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. Well, before okay, so you answer, me. do you want to explain what it is? For it's it's the okay, secret? I'm always or anybody out of it. <laughs> yeah, the secret's all about the laws of attraction. I'm a big vibrational energy person. I, I read all of Abraham Hicks stuff. I, I like all that stuff. I have a friend who's into it. and. Um, Laws of attraction. I mean, that's what the secret's all about. And you have to believe in it because yep. it's real, real stuff. Yeah. I, I'm with you. I, I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome. You, you, what you put out into the universe, the universe puts back to you. So Boys. positivity yep. and negativity it just depends on what it is that you put out there. Yep. So who did what to get the whole world COVID for a year? <laughs> yeah, exactly. like who put something that terrible out into the world? <laughs> Somebody I got it know. the first time, and then it just started spreading from there. Mm. Yep. <laughs> but it's true. I mean, that's if you put out, like if you're a negative person time, yeah. all the time, you're always negative, of course that's what you're going to get back. Like, that's not a surprise to anybody. And if you're always yeah. positive, you know people that are so happy and positive. You love to be around them. They just make you feel good when you're with them. Right? So that's the other side of it. So anything in between, the closer it is to the positive person, the far away it is from the really negative person, got to be better, right? That's how I look at it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Next up, the Marvel movies. Like the, the whole canon. All of it. MCU? And 
MCU Marvel yeah. Comic Marvel Universe. Cinematic Universe. Oh, yeah, I'm like, I don't yeah. know. Marvel Cinematic Universe. We actually yeah. only got Kate watching these like a few days ago. For I the know. First time, so yeah. <laughs> Did you lock her in a closet until a few days ago and you let her so out? It kind of seemed that way. I, she yeah. was asking me where to start and I, I sent her a list. I was like, you start with Iron Man. And I don't know, like four or five hours later, she was almost on like the, like the Avengers, which is maybe like five movies deep. I was like, yeah. I, I don't even know how you got through that that quickly. <laughs> yeah, do you know if you go on the Disney Plus app and then you click on Marvel, they have it in like phase one now, phase two, yeah. and you can they follow the whole order. thing. And there's That's how I did And it. all the movies are all connected. Yeah. That's how I did it. I, I just finished last night uh, the second Thor, The Dark World. So next up is uh, the second Avengers movie. And then after that, no. I think it's Guardians. No, I don't. Okay. Well, uh, don't. you got to do Captain America too now. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that's, what, that's what's next. I don't have it memorized uh, like you. Sorry. Yeah. But I, no, but sorry, I will say yeah. it's awesome. 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 I uh, can't live with that. I'm enjoying myself. It's awesome. If you're a superhero person, like, like I think I was like Superman for the first 16 years of my life. The costume didn't fit too much when I was 16. And <laughs> I, yeah, I love my daughter and I watch Supergirl and Batwoman and, you know, all the Wonder Woman movies and all the MCU stuff. And we like both. We don't care. Did you watch Stargirl on HBO? She says the one thing she hates. She won't watch Stargirl. She thinks Why? it's terrible. Wow. I don't know. I didn't see it. I have no idea. She's just looking at this kid and she's like, oh, come on. I could do that in our backyard. And she doesn't. So she, does, she does doesn't take- She doesn't accept the Stargirl thing, but she'll accept all the other stuff. Does it take place in modern times? Yeah. It's uh, like, mm-hmm. I don't know, Montana or uh-huh. Nebraska, like modern day. Yeah. And it's she's not inherited with gifts. She just finds this staff and the staff chooses her because it doesn't work with anybody else and the staff allows her to like fight the bullies at school and you know whatever. okay it's good. by radioactive spider type of thing. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but the cast is surprisingly good luke wilson plays her stepdad and i mean like the last time i saw luke wilson he was in the movies like he's a pretty big decent name so i was really surprised well, I think these days television, I think it is kind of shifting back to TV. Like for a long time, you were a big star if you were a movie star. Now you're a big star if you're on like the big Disney Plus show or the big Netflix show, you know? So oh, Because we don't go to the movies anymore because it's dangerous. Yeah, but even before that. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the streaming services have definitely taken over the world. I will say one thing, though, because I know you're going to move on to the next topic. My daughter's very upset that Batwoman, that they changed the character, that Kate Kane is dead and right. that they have this new pack. They didn't even have somebody recast as Kate Kane. They have right. a new woman. And I think they had like some discrepancy <laughs> behind the scenes. And she well, it wasn't so something. much a discrepancy as um, I can't remember her name, but Ruby Rose, Ruby right. Rose did not want to return for season two. Right. It was some, um, yeah, she didn't yeah. want to, they said it was mutual, but I'm sure it wasn't. So she was I, very upset not about mutual. that. <laughs> it's yeah. never mutual. No, it never is. Um, I think not when, that you, of a star when you are the show. star of your own show and you just suddenly don't come back for season two, there's no way it's mutual. But no, I didn't know that that's what they did with it. Like I haven't watched season two yet, but um, sorry, I blew it sure. for you. No, no, no. They, they were gonna have to kill her off or something because you don't just like. Well, they don't. You don't know she's dead yet. There was a plane crash. crash. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, there was a plane <laughs> crash. The new girl found the bat woman uniform and stuff, and now she's kind of mas- masquerading as her roguely. And then you don't know what happened to Kate Kane yet. So okay. Find that yeah. I don't want to totally push Ruby Rose down, though. Um, I, as I understand it, I think she broke her neck on, like, day one filming that show. Did like she? she um, yeah, it was like she wasn't supposed to be doing her own stunts, and she tried one of them, and it, it like, broke her neck or something like that. It was something crazy. That so I understand that a yeah. show like this is maybe a little too much, especially when we talk about the fact that, like, you ask – 10 people what they think of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and at least eight of them will have seen it. You ask 10 people, you ask 100 people what they think of the CW Arrowverse, and maybe three of them will know what no you're talking idea. about. Yeah. Yeah. So to break your neck over something like that, you know, maybe it's not, not worth, worth it. Yeah, maybe it's not worth it. I agree. I agree. So <laughs> All we right. do a whole Let show me... on that. Exactly. <laughs> One last awful or awesome sports during the pandemic. And I mean, I'm not a sports person, but I think it's What do you mean? It was awful. What you, yeah. There was no sports. Right. I mean, well, there was the wobble and there was the bubble, right? Men's basketball and women's basketball. Um, but it just wasn't 
the same. I didn't or, watch any of it. Yeah. Yeah, it's terrible. And I feel like on the non-professional level, it seems to have never stopped. Like I, I'm always seeing people going out and doing like little league and high school sports. It seems that they worked that out. I mean, look, football went on. We had a football season, but not well, much in college way, as far as college yeah. was concerned. That was disappointing. Yeah. All right. Well, that was the game. Super fun. Sorry <laughs> about the last question. <laughs> the downer note. Right? They can't all be <laughs> awesome, right? There should be at least one awful thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah totally. I don't even think any of us actually outright said it. I will go awful, you know. Awful. I mean, yeah. I, I'm never really a big sports guy, but it was. I'm just like I. I don't fundamentally understand how COVID stopped because we got on a sports field, you know. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It didn't. They all got sick. That was the problem. I think that's <laughs> there were right. games being delayed all the time. There you go. Right. Not surprising. Yeah. Everybody spitting on each other and dragging yeah. each other down, jumping on each other. <laughs> yeah. COVID. We're supposed to be six feet away from people. Everybody else jumping on each other. Get, get COVID. Yeah. Totally agree. Right. None Crazy. of that's right. That's all. Yeah. Anything coming up you want to promote? Um, I had mentioned to you during the break, I it's it's less of a promotion and more of a like keep me moving type of a thing. So I'm working on a book. It's not available yet, but it's called um, uh, 10 Ways to Get Sued by Anyone and Everyone. I'm co-authoring it with I my good it. friend. Barry Great. Cohen, and I hope to have it out second quarter, late second quarter, let's say, because we're almost in the second quarter. So we're getting close. That I'll let you know when it's out. What's something somebody could do to get sued? Yeah, give us a spoiler. Um, what's a good example? Um, yeah. I get a lot of situations where people like partnered in a business or they invest, they loan their friend money or, you know, into a business. We're talking, you know, 50, 100,000, whatever. And they, totally think that like their emails and their text messages is going to be enough to collect this money back and they don't have a note or any kind of a written doc and every once in a while they're an attorney too one of the people so yeah people Mm -hmm. well what about these text messages we can make something out of that i'm like yeah well what about the phone calls that you had with this guy well i didn't have any phone calls oh good luck he'll say you did i mean everything you know that's another thing i was mentioning to you the problem with memory and there's been countless examples of this um and i do a lot of speaking Mm -hmm. on it is that what you you and I, so if we don't have things in writing, you'll think, Vinny, we talked about this, and I'll think we talked about this, and we both believe what we're saying. We're not lying. We're not trying to rip the other person off. You just believe this happened, and I believe this happened, and we can't come together on it, and we have a big problem because memory just doesn't, you know, our memory's not like a file cabinet where Kate gives me something, and I put it in a file, and I slide it away, and I go later on, pull it out, it's right there. I mean, there are some people that have photographic memories, but... What, what memory really works is that you have a box in your head, right? Everything gets dumped in the box and it all gets mixed around. And then when you need something, you start riffling through all the papers and you might pull out the wrong paper and think it's something else and start reading it. And you think it applies to this and that and you get confused. And that happens all the time. You can tell somebody a story and they'll be like, Kate would be like, Mitch, that's not true. We weren't there. We were in Chicago that weekend at a, at a convention. I'm like, what? No, we weren't. We're at my grandmother's you know, 60th birthday. Oh my no, God. we weren't. And that happened all the time. But you said something really interesting in, uh, on the break where you said that the law treats us like we have perfect memories, right? Yeah, yeah. The law expects us to have perfect memories. If you are deposed, so let's say you, you have a traumatic thing, you witnessed something, right? Then they may take a statement of the police or whatever, and then there's a lawsuit involved. Then eight to ten months later, or maybe it, within certainly within two years, but a couple of years later, they now send you a notice, Kate, you got to go and get deposed. And you're now recanting this story from two years ago you probably can't even remember anymore, even though it was a traumatic experience, right? They call these flashbulb moments in your life. All the studies have been like these traumatic experiences. You must remember them. They find those are worse, by the way, than the, the non-traumatic events. So then, so then I take your story, which still doesn't line up with what the police report was two years ago. And then you go and you testify. The testimony happens another two years down the road because of the justice system and how things take so long. And now you're testifying and the guy's asking you questions and you're totally off from what you told them two years ago. And they're like, well, Kate, you know, you're saying this and you said this in your testimony back there. You want to take a look at this? You look at it and you go, wow, I, I must have been wrong. Okay, well, were you wrong then or were you wrong now? And you look like you're lying or you don't remember things. Look at Brian Williams. Remember the whole thing with Brian Williams when he went yeah. on the David Letterman show, right? It was a five years or 10 year anniversary of that thing that happened yeah. to him in Iraq. And it turned out later on that he it wasn't even in the helicopter. Lie. Yeah. He didn't lie to ruin his career. Correct. No idiot Malcolm, would do that. Right. He, he believed Blackwell. in his mind. Yeah. 
Malcolm Gladwell had a really amazing episode on his podcast, uh, Revisionist History, all about yes, memory. on Brian Williams. That's what started yeah. me researching it. He's great. That's a great podcast, by the way. I agree. I agree. Yeah. It's one of my favorites. Uh, oh, my his God. Revisionist History, yeah. I wish yeah. he would do more episodes. I was doing other podcasts yeah. and stuff. But he's got great yeah. stuff. And that's what – that was one of the things I listened to it, and I was having to be speaking, and I was like, you know what? That's what happens with the law. That's what happens with contracts. That's why people need things in writing. It's not because – then he's going to rip me off because I didn't put it in writing and now he's going to take advantage of me. It's because he That's really true. believes what he's saying and I believe what I'm saying and no, but there's nothing there to like bring our minds together. So we have a memory expert who's helping us, a guy named Matt um, Girk, who's uh, who teaches this thing called the memory switch. It's like, you know, one of those, you know, you can go into a room and meet 150 people and he knows every all their names. So we did a whole thing about uh, memory and how you you should have him on the podcast actually that can interest it's you. It's yeah. very interesting yeah fascinating stuff so that's my book so you can watch for it i'll let you know when it comes out and then we can get it out to people Fantastic. love it somebody wants to get a hold of you maybe get that template for starting a business doing the plan maybe they want to check out the book maybe they want to hire you how do they get a hold of you website's vinehackerlaw.com so always easy to find me there my schedule's there 20 minute free consultations you can email me my email is mitch at vinehackerlaw.com I'm on LinkedIn, definitely the only Mitch Beinhacker on LinkedIn. There are other Beinhackers, but not a Mitch. We are related, by the way. And uh, Facebook, Instagram, you know, all the platforms I'm on. Uh, same with the podcast. That's on the platforms, too. So that's nice. the, I'm, I'm, you, can't, you can't miss me. I'm easy to find. You know. Fantastic. I feel like this is the fastest uh, 45 minutes ever. This is such a fun, fun show. Um, thank you. Valuable. Yeah, it's fantastic. Thank you to our listeners, especially the subscribers. We so appreciate the support. Thank you to New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, the official sponsor of the show. They do home auto and workers count, so check them out. And finally, thank you to Mitch Beinhacker of Beinhacker Law and the podcast, The Accidental Entrepreneur. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me.